Hi, good evening. Good to see you guys. Well, I always say good to see you guys, except only you guys can see me. I can't see you, but good to have you guys on. Thanks for jumping on Periscope. You guys are always on it. Glad you could join me tonight. Facebook is, is getting there. Let's see how they do. Um, they're changing algorithms on Facebook, so if you cannot catch me, uh, make sure that you jump on Periscope. But Facebook people, share, share, share so that you're friends correctly um, because there are different ways to wait on the Lord and some of those ways prolong the process and some of those ways um, allow the process to become um, shorter. Someone said, I'm listening to one of your teachings now on YouTube. Awesome. I love it. Um, so all our um, teachings you can find on YouTube. Um, Periscope, you guys are freezing. I'm not sure why. Let me see. I'm going to plug you in and see if that makes a difference. Facebook, it's good to see you guys on. Y'all know I do um, Facescope. So a little bit of Periscoping, a little bit of Facebooking. Let's get them squared away um, so that I don't lose them. All right. Let's see if this is going to make a difference. And then I'll jump on the content. For those of you guys who are new, let's get this plugged in. Let's see. So Periscope, if you guys are freezing off and on, then you can go to Facebook and follow me at Faith Wokoma, Faith C. Wokoma, and you can watch it there because I'm not going to be jumping back and forth. I can't accept any more friend requests, but you can follow and watch along with the video. All right. So for those of you guys who are just jumping on for the first time, my name is Faith Wokoma. I own a business called Ask Dr. Faith, consulting, coaching, training, and equipping the body of Christ to live a brilliant life, and I co pass um, a church alongside my pastor called Legacy Center Church in Cary, North Carolina. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Like I said, share uh, with your friends. Algorithms have switched up a little bit, so I hear some people don't get notifications uh, when they used to, um, so just make sure you jump on. All right, I'm going to come out of a scripture that I shared on Sunday, and you could watch that full sermon on um, Legacy Center Church, uh, their Facebook page or their YouTube, because I'll probably reference to it a couple of times as I'm expounding on this principle that I shared on Sunday. So you can go follow our church page, and you can catch all our lives um, every Sunday morning um, and Wednesday nights as well. So you can go like our page. But I shared a scripture. I could not remember it. It's just one of my favorite. Uh, scriptures and the reason that I could not find it is because it's in the message translation um, and a lot of us have re read this scripture Romans 8 um, many many times but the way that the message breaks it down uh, really revolutionized my life and I, I read this verse in the message translation a couple years ago I believe one of my friends shared it with me um, and it was huge when it comes to waiting so I'm going to share that with you guys and then I'm going to break down some things for you all right so Romans 8 uh, starting at 22 through 25. This is the message translation. It says, all around us, we observe a pregnant creation. The difficult times of pain throughout the world are simply birth pains. But it's not only around us, it's within us. So we have difficult birth pains even within us. And I'll go into that in a little, in a minute. The spirit of God is arousing us within. We're also feeling the birth pains, the sterile and barren bodies of ours are yearning for full deliverance. So if you read it in new King James, it says that the earth is groaning in earnest expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. This is the message translation. It says, um, and this is verse 24, which I absolutely love, which I'm going to focus on. It says, this is why waiting does not diminish us any more than waiting diminishes a pregnant mother. We are enlarged in our waiting. We, of course, don't see the enlarging, but the longer we wait, the larger we become and more joyful and expectant. The longer we wait, the larger we become and more joyful and more expectant. And they go on um, to just reference uh, a pregnant woman, that when a woman is pregnant, 
as she's growing and as she has to wait for the baby to come, her joy does not diminish because she still has several weeks or because she still has several months. Yes, she is uncomfortable. Yes, she's probably ready to see the baby, but she doesn't become less joyful in the waiting. And so one of the principles of waiting is understanding that what the waiting period is for is to enlarge our capacity capacity to be able to love, to be able to nurture, to be able to carry whatever the thing is that we're waiting to be birthed. And so a lot of times all we're focused on is how long we've been waiting, how big we are. I am so full of information. I am so full of, um, you know, wisdom. Why don't I have the same opportunities? Why didn't I have my big break yet? Why am I still stuck on the same job? I am smarter than these people. I have been here much longer. And so for us, instead of looking at the weight as something that is growing our capacity, we begin to look at the weight as a burden. And so the second thing that you have to do is you have to change the perspective of how you look at waiting. One is you have to make sure that you learn how to look at waiting as a, a moment of joy, as a thing of joy. Um, I was reading Graham Cook today. I absolutely love him. And he was talking about how the fruit of the spirit Spirit, and I'm getting ahead of my notes, but the fruit of the Spirit is part of the nature of God. God is actually the fruit of the Spirit. He is love. He is joy. He is patience. He is goodness. So it's not something that He has. It's something that He is. Whereas for us, the fruit of the Spirit is something that we have to cultivate and we have to become it as well. And so He was talking about how patience is one of those things that God does not lack because He is the He is the essence of the word. He is patient in every single thing that he does. The problem is we haven't mastered the fruit of the spirit. And like I said, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, but one of the things that we have to understand is that the weight has a purpose. And whatever it is that you're waiting for, whatever it is that you're believing God for, we have to connect with the Lord and say, first of all, first of all, you need to know what you're waiting for. Because some of you guys become very agitated in seasons. You become frustrated with seasons. You become agitated with people. You become discontented. And you don't even know why you're feeling that way. And so if you say, well, I'm waiting on the Lord, you need to be able to actually verbalize what is the thing that you're waiting for. If you're pregnant, oh, I'm pregnant with something big. Well, what is it? What are you going to birth? What is it going to look like? What is this? Is it a business? Is it a ministry? Is it a relationship? Is it you moving to a deeper realm in God? Is it you maturing? And so in order for your weight to be significant, you need to begin to press into the Lord and say, what is it I'm waiting for? Instead of you just waiting for symptoms. So there, uh, wait, I mean, just looking at the symptoms. So there's sometimes when a woman is pregnant, right? And they don't know that they're pregnant. They just know that their body's changing. They just know that maybe they're having more sick, uh, morning sickness and they th begin to have this irritation. The problem with us is when we begin to feel those type of changes in the spirit realm, instead of pressing in and saying, God, what is happening? Uh, what is this irritation? What's happening in my spirit that we begin to, to begin to distance ourselves from God. We begin to get mad. We begin to get frustrated. And so oftentimes we abort the fruit that should come from our weight because we haven't even pressed in to recognize what it is, right? So you want to be aware when you are changing spiritually, when your psyche is changing. So you need to ask yourself, am I feeling this way because of something tangible that happened? Um, if you can't put your finger on why you're feeling a particular way, God, are you doing something in me? So you need to figure out what you're waiting for, right? And then the next thing that you need to be clear about is why you're waiting, why are you waiting, right? My kids have given us uh, their Christmas list. We buy them two to three things. We don't do a big, big Christmas. Um, and so it's really hard for my three-year-old to understand, uh, you know, why she's waiting for Christmas, right? She figures, hey, I've given you my list. <laughs> 
Okay, is today Christmas? Is today Christmas? Every day is Christmas. They're asking because they don't understand the significance of the wait, right? Yes, we got your prayer request. Yes, we understood what you wanted us to get you. But just because you ask God for a husband today and he doesn't do it in three months or even three years doesn't mean that God is not going to do it. And just because you've been asking for breakthrough in a particular area and it's been more than two days, or I'm just kidding, but some of you guys have been waiting five years. Some of you guys have been waiting 10 years. It doesn't mean that God is not going to do it, but you need to say, okay, God, what is it in this wait that I'm supposed to be doing so that I can fully maximize what you're going to give me? So a lot of us struggle with waiting because we don't, we haven't mastered trust. Trust is only is mastered when we really, really believe that God is a good father. Not just sing the song, he's a good father, but understand that he's a good father. So that even when we have to wait, it is out of his goodness. If you could understand that waiting on God is out of his goodness, the reason that God makes us wait for things is because of his goodness, then the way that you treat waiting is going to be very, very different, right? But if you see God as everybody else or your natural your parents or people who made promises and they didn't fulfill them or you have been spoiled because natural people give you whatever you want and you feel like the Lord should move like that on your life then you're not going to really be able to utilize the waiting to your advantage there are things that should be done while waiting and it's so interesting because the word of the Lord that the Lord has given me for 2019 is this is the year of nesting and resting um, which by the way we're getting ready to do a three day um, uh, uh, end of the year fast, December 29th, 30th, and 31st. So you could join the WMI fast group if you haven't already to get the information. But part of why I'm sharing that is that part of waiting is nesting. Part of waiting is resting. And a lot of us are praying for acceleration and we're waiting for suddenlies. We're believing God for the supernatural move, but we have not built up the capacity to be able to to handle it. One of the things our own church is going through is we had our pastor come in in October and he said, all right, you guys are at about 250. You're going to 500 in about six months. You're going to be at 750. You're going to be at a, at a thousand. Do your systems at this point, can they handle 500 or 700 people when they come in the door? And the answer is no. We do not have things in place to be able to handle what we were waiting for, right? I think we've done well for a two-year-old church, but what we had to do was break the system and reconstruct the system so that we can handle what is to come. The point of waiting is to prepare you to be able to handle what the Lord wants to do. Now, not all waiting is divinely orchestrated. Not all waiting is divinely orchestrated. They are things that cause us to wait and cause things to be prolonged that we have created uh, because of our own disobedience, our own um, fear, and so on and so forth. So I'm, let me go through that. I'm going to use my notes because I don't want to miss any of this stuff um, that I had jotted down for you guys real quickly. So while you are waiting, you want to think about what am I waiting for and why am I waiting? What is the reason that I, the Lord feels like I need to wait on this, right? The next thing that you want to um, ask is what is the waiting producing? Have I grown mature? Am I kinder? Am I more patient? Am I more loving? What has me having to wait for a child produced? What has me having to wait for a breakthrough in my finances produced? Has it caused me to be more generous or has it caused me to be more stingy? Has it caused me to be more loving towards my spouse or has it driven us apart because we don't have the child we're waiting for? Whatever it is what is it producing all right so before the manifestation of a natural thing there must be a manifestation of a spiritual thing i answer all questions at the end all right before the manifestation of a natural thing there must be a manifestation of a spiritual thing so oftentimes what you will see in the waiting is that god is trying to birth something spiritually and one of those things that he's usually trying to birth spiritually is the fruit of the spirit or the um maturity level for you to be able to handle it so some of you guys are saying why am i still waiting why am i still contending you want to say okay lord what have i birthed so far in me what has this waiting produced so far in my life has it made me stronger has it made me kinder has it made me wiser? What is it uh, that has been produced in my life? All right. 
You want to make sure that you ask that and you want to make sure that it is producing something. Some of us, we feel like that, you know, if God doesn't do it um, or if God is not moving, then it's a waste of time or God doesn't love us. But the truth is God is moving in our waiting. But if we don't ask him, if we don't spend those times really pressing in and asking him to show us what it is that he wants to develop, we're going to waste it. So what is it that is being produced in your waiting? Are you becoming stronger or are you becoming more isolative? Someone said, are you becoming better or are you becoming uh, bitter, right? There is something that God wants to produce. And oftentimes, whatever we've been praying for and whatever we're contending for, we're not really going to see it until the spiritual manifestation of what the Lord is trying to do. Um, and so one of the things, I'll give an example of me before I got married, right? Um, you know, I had had this plan that I was going to be married by 25, by 28, I'll have my first child and so on and so forth. And I've shared with some of you guys this, and I said, you know, this is what I want the Lord, you know, Lord, and I'll pray into it. And one day God said, Hey, that's a great thing that you've planned, but I have a better surprise for you. And I need you to trust me. Right. And he said, before you could get married, I need you to master intimacy. I need you to master what it means to be so in love with me, what it means to be be so devoted to me so that when you get married, you will not lose your walk with the Lord and the fire that you've had with the Lord because you now have a spouse. And so there is something specific that the Lord is wanting to develop and churn out of your waiting. And you need to figure out what that is so that you don't waste whatever the season uh, that you're in. <clears throat> All right. So want to look for uh, natural before you look for the natural, ask yourself, what have I birthed in the spirit? All right, the next thing is, there are things that we do that prolong the wait. So like I said before, uh, we lost Facebook, they're back on. Not every wait is divinely orchestrated. There are some weights that are divinely orchestrated, and I'll give you some hints of those. And then there are some that we created ourselves. And so I'll give you an example of the children of Israel, right? It was supposed to take them 40 days to get into the promised land. Uh, is it 10 days? I was confused. It, whatever. It ended up taking them 40 years, right? So not whatever, but y'all look it up, right? Um, um, and so there was there was the promise of God, and then there was a level and a responsibility that they had in order to enter into the promise at their divine destined time. But then there were things that they did that prolonged their time. And so some of you guys feel like you're waiting because the Lord has you waiting, but you're really waiting because of things that you have done in your own life. And yes, I'm going to go there. I don't necessarily... Just preach these little pretty patty cake stuff because we need to understand how God works. Oftentimes we get really angry with God and it has nothing to do with God. The other day I put up a status on my Facebook and I was talking about how God will never impose his will on your will. The only thing that he has given us is a will, the ability to make decisions. And so if God wants to do something in your life, but your will wants to do something else, he's going to continue to allow you to do. He's going to, you're going to do whatever you want to do or he's going to allow you to do that, not because he wants you to do it, but because he respects um, his own protocol, which is I'm never going to trump a human being's will. All right. So the children of Israel, some of these you've heard from the beginning, from the beginning and the orphan mindset will always enlarge and, and enlarge the weight for destiny because people that struggle with the orphan mindset are always complaining. And that's the first thing that you will see with the children of Israel. As soon as they got out, they were happy and then as soon as it wasn't going the way that they thought it would go as soon as it became a little bit harder what did they begin to do they began to complain and they began to grumble the difference between a son and someone with an orphan spirit is that a son knows how to rejoice in the waiting where an orphan is always looking for someone to blame for why they have to wait all right. So the children of God were grumbling and they were complaining. And this really grieved the Lord's heart. It grieved Moses's heart. And when you have an orphan spirit, you're not able to see what God is doing in the moment. People that struggle with the orphan spirit are always waiting for something bigger and better. And they struggle, they miss what is right in front of them. And so a lot of us have prolonged our waiting because God is moving in our life right in front of us and he's doing miraculous things. And it may not be the thing that you want him to do, but if you could acknowledge what God is doing in the moment, then God can hasten things for you so that you can experience breakthrough. All right. 
So grumbling, complaining. Then the struggle with fear. Fear is one of the biggest things that elongates your waiting. And a lot of you guys are like, I'm not married yet. But it's because you had a relationship and the relationship didn't work out. So you've closed up your heart and you're not willing yourself to open yourself up to anybody else because you're afraid. And what that fear has done is made your wait longer. I just shared something today on my Facebook that one of the things about love and one of the things about life is that if you understand that we're going to go through cycles of loving, cycles of rejection, cycles of forgiving, cycles of being loved, then you won't have to worry about someone not loving you. Like, I can freely love you because I've mastered the fact that some people are not going to love me. Some people are going to reject me, but that's not going to keep me from the fact of loving. And when I wrote that post, I was actually thinking about pastors and leaders, how oftentimes we will pour ourselves into people, give them everything, for, and then for that person to turn around, pick up, and leave, right? And then the person comes back, and they're like, I'm so sorry, we, I'll never do that again, and you all, all over again have to open yourself up, but that's part of being a mature believer, and so mature believers understand that there are, there are cycles of loving, there are cycles of forgiving, and they do not allow pain to thwart their destiny, they do not allow pain to keep them from going forward. All right. The next thing that elongates our waiting when we're waiting for God to do something is that there is a lack of intimacy in our relationship with God. And so we're more focused on what God can give us than what God is doing in the moment. The worst thing ever is being out on a date with someone and you are just pouring out your heart to them and they're busy on the phone or they're busy wondering what the next thing you're going to do. Or the worst thing ever is having a friendship where you do something extraordinary extraordinary for them and they're telling you all the things that you did wrong but that's what we do when we're in waiting seasons and in, and we're not intimate with the father and we're more focused on why he hasn't done what we think you should do he's saying hey i just want to be with you i want to know you i want to love you i want to rewire your thinking i want to take you deeper and you're like yeah but god you promised this yeah god when are you going to do this yeah god well you said you're not a liar right can you just focus on him can you just focus on his presence? Usually things like marriage, breakthrough, you know, even nordiarity, right? If you're believing for your videos to go viral, those don't come because you worked hard at it. Those come because you were devoted to the father. Oftentimes when you get married, it's when you, you least expected it, right? When God breaks through uh, or you were just doing the ordinary and in a moment you're marked right? David is taking bread to his brothers. That's what he did. He was just a shepherd boy. And then there's a suddenly moment in which what he's been preparing for in the wilderness is now tested and it thrusts him into destiny. But some of us are getting so tired with the mundane and what we are called to do every single day because we're so focused on the future that we could be missing what God is doing in the moment. So we need to master intimacy. If you're waiting for a spouse, if you're waiting for money, if you're waiting for power, Power and you have not a mastered intimacy and identity, those things will destroy you. If you are waiting for intimacy with a man or a woman, uh, power, or you're waiting for influence of any sort and you do not know who you are and who your father is, they will eventually destroy you. We see it all the time in church. We see it also happening with people that are in Hollywood. And so the waiting is to expand your capacity to be able to not easily be uh, tossed to and fro because you understand the value of what it took to get where you got. That's why I don't give out very many free things. My face scopes will be the majority of the free things. In January, we're doing about four free uh, webinars that I'm going to be sharing with you guys, but a lot of times when people don't pay for things, they don't really value it. Not y'all, because I get emails all the time uh, in my inbox of how much you guys um, really appreciate our ministry. So, but there, there's, the Lord is, understands that the weight is going to, it costs you something. And your weight is your exchange for the value of what God wants to do. Your weight is your exchange for the value. A lot of us want things very quickly. 
But when things come very quickly, we don't really value them. If you know what it means to get a doctorate and have to write a dissertation, you value that thing. I get so mad when people get an honorary doctorate and all of a sudden it's their doctor so-and-so everywhere. I'm like, you don't understand the value. First of all, people that really have a doctorate hardly put doctor in front of their name in front of everything, right? Because they also learned in school how to use your doctorate and when to put it, when you put the initials or when, you know, but anyway, they, the honorary doctorates, <laughs> I'm going to get some one day. I know it, right? But you don't understand the value sometimes. Now, some honorary doctorates is because of the work that they've done and, um, you know, the sacrifice they've paid. So they, there is a level of value there. But when we don't understand the cost of the weight, then we don't value what God gives us. And this is what happens. Oh, Lord, I've been waiting on a spouse. God gives them to you. Um, and you forgot how long you had to wait. And you start treating that spouse any kind of way, right? God, I've been waiting for this opportunity to serve word about my husband. And you laugh at it and you become cynical. This is what happened with Sarah. She heard the angels telling Abraham, next year at this time, you shall have a son. And she was cynical. She laughed at it. God was gracious towards her. He still gave her the child in the time. And I really believe it's because of Abraham's faith. Um, and God is gracious towards us, but we need to watch if, uh, how cyn cynical we've become concerning the promises of God. Just because they're not here yet does not mean that God lied. And you need to be excited and expectant every time you receive a word concerning that promise. And you need to be um, as excited as you were the first time you heard God tell you that thing or somebody shared that thing to you. The way that you value prophetic words helps um, produce the promise much faster. But if you don't value the prophetic words over your life and you become a cynicist, or cynical, I don't even cynicist is a word, but you've become a cynic, um, you've become cynical over them. They can abort the very thing that the Lord is trying to do. As a man thinketh, so is he. And so what we think about the words of the Lord over our lives and how we value them always and often create what we see around us. All right. I'll get words all the time that I've gotten a billion times and I'm always so graceful, you know, Hey, I, I got a word that you're going here. Thank you. Thank you so much. I received that word and I've gotten it probably 60 times, but I know that God is faithful and he is a, um, a worker of his promises. And so you have to really watch out that you're not becoming cynical. Another thing that you want to um, challenge is, um, just unbelief. Just unbelief. And we talked about trust. If you can trust God, then you can believe God. But if you don't trust that he makes you wait out of his goodness, then it's going to be hard to trust him. Like if you don't trust God's motives, right? Like why is he making me wait? If you think that God is making you wait because he's punishing you, right? You're not going to trust him. Who trusts someone to think they're punishing? But if you say, no, it is out of his goodness. It is out of his wisdom that I'm having to wait. I know that my girlfriend didn't have to wait six years or that, you know, my man didn't have to wait five years to have whatever, but I trust the wisdom of the Lord and I trust the wisdom of the Lord more than I trust my own wisdom and I rely on the wisdom of the Lord more than I rely in my own wisdom. Oftentimes when we abort the weight is because we do not trust the wisdom of the Lord and we trust our own wisdom more than the wisdom of the Lord. And so you need to really make sure that you have dealt with any unbelief. And then the last thing is that you want to make sure that you're dealing with any cynicism that is uh, not cynicism, but like you're dealing with comparison, comparing, right? Comparing yourself to other people, because when you're waiting and you're seeing everybody else walk out what you've been believing God for, it could be really, really difficult, but you need to make sure that your heart is focused on the Lord and not on anything else and not what anybody else is doing. And when you understand the wisdom of the Lord and you understand the faithfulness of God, then you will be able to wait and sit and out for those things. So I'll take a couple questions. Facebook is going in and out. So Periscope, uh, Periscope let's see how you're doing. Periscope could be a good word. All right. So we'll take some questions. Let me um, restart this for them. I think I had seen someone who posted something. So you can put up your questions um, while I'm restarting uh, this for Facebook. 
How, how do you deal with unbelief? You've got to deal with your father wounds and deal with how you see God. And do you believe God? Do you believe he is uh, who he says he is? Um, can you trust him? You want to deal with all those things in order for you to be able to fully uh, walk out what the Lord um, has spoken over your life. So a lot of times unbelief comes with a lack of understanding of who God is and um, who God uh, says who he is. Are unbelief and doubt the same thing? Yes, yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Yep. How do I recover from hurt? Um, you choose to forgive and you choose to take that hurt and make it something that works for you and not against you. And so you say, okay, God, I was wounded in this area. What is it that I uh, need to learn from it? How do I grow in this area? How do I become more like the Lord? Or how do I deal with the orphan spirit? I have taught on that several times. You can go to my YouTube page and uh, watch those. You could also purchase our Soul Be Made Whole course. Um, it's four weeks dealing with that, and it's on our uh, AskDrFaith.com. Uh, All right, Facebook, we're back on. Y'all are having many problems tonight, so um, I'll just do this Q&A, and then we'll be jumping on. All right, how do you wait without killing yourself? Don't allow it. Don't allow the weight of the weight to hinder you. Instead of just feeling the burden of it, allow it to make you stronger. Um, but didn't we just pray for accelerated blessings, especially during the marriage fast? Yes. And some of some people are going to get it, especially if they mastered the weight. But if you didn't master your weight and we prayed for accelerated blessings, your weight may be delayed because there are areas in your life that you need to grow in. And that's why someone's asking, you know, we do a 21-day marriage fast. The first three days of our marriage fast that we do in September, we deal with inner healing stuff, emotion stuff, generational curses, um, critical spirit, judgmental stuff, because all those things are things that delay the promises of God in our life, right? But if you know, I have dealt with all this stuff, I am walking in my purpose, I am serving God, then if you have to wait, then it's a divinely orchestrated wait, meaning that God in his wisdom is having you wait and you're not waiting because there is something internally or even generationally that's going on that's hindering um, your process. All right. How do you develop patience without giving up? So Jesus said that he endured the cross that was set before him um, because of the joy. And so you that's why I started with in order for you to not die while you're waiting, you need to be very clear about what you're waiting for. A pregnant woman doesn't give up in, in month three because they're throwing up all day long because they're aware that they're going to have a baby in, in the ninth month. Right. And so if you know that there is something coming and you're at the place where you feel discomfort, and you're throwing up all, all day long, what you focus on is not the discomfort, but the thing that is coming. Oftentimes we get caught up in what is happening in the now and we're not aware, uh, we forget about why we're even in the now. And you need to stick to it. How do you stay on course when receiving download um, about your spouse? So every time I would get words, and this is so funny, I got lots of words about my spouse, probably two were correct out of maybe like 25 right? Um, and that's why you need to just take them and put them in the back of your pocket. Uh, some, some things that I discerned, I discerned correctly. Some things that people that I really valued as prophetic voices shared, and it just wasn't my spouse. Like they were just off. Uh, and then there were some that just nailed it on the head. And so if you're getting things about a spouse, you say, God, thank you for this. I give it back to you. And that's it. Um, when the person comes or when a person comes, you can try to match them to the prophetic words. All right. The Lord said that He's going to love the Lord. The Lord said that she's going to be an amazing prayer warrior. You know, the Lord, not the external stuff. Like she's going to look like this or she's going to have this kind of job. I want you to match up the internal stuff. What are the spiritual things that the Lord has said about that spouse? And the Lord will give you those words so you can match them up in the spirit realm. But we're not looking at, oh, he said he was 5'5 five, five and now he's, you know, whatever. God doesn't care about that stuff. You do, but he really does it. So you want to hold it. And then when people come, you want to say spiritually, where does this line up with what the Lord has given me? All right. Um, how do you to fully be set free from the spirit of fear? Um, you got to master love. Scripture says perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. So people are usually afraid because they don't know that they are loved. And if you don't know that you are loved, then you don't feel safe. 
And so a lot of us want someone to lay hands on us and cast out the spirit of fear. And that is one part of it. But a lot of us deal with fear because there's a wound or an open door. And so someone or something happened that caused you to be afraid. But if you understand that God is with me and God is, bef is going before me, then I will not fear. I will not fear. Um, he has given me a spirit of power, a spirit of love, uh, power, and a sound mind. And so when fear comes up, you have to come out of agreement with it and connect with what the word of God says, which is I have power, love, and a sound mind. The more you rehearse the truth, the more it becomes your reality. I say that all the time. It's one of our um, our coaching um, things that we teach when we do our certification, which, by the way, the certification program is opening in February. But um, you got to rehearse the truth. All right. All right. Facebook, do you guys have any questions? Let's see. Uh, breaking poverty mindset as a new Christian. I did a whole teaching on that about two weeks ago. You can go check it out on my YouTube. All right. Is everyone meant to have a spouse? No. Not everybody's going to get married. Not everybody's meant to be to have a spouse. I've probably taught on this at some point. Um, I may touch on it again. But um, most people who know they're not meant to get married usually don't have a desire for it. They're really focused whether it's on their career or on building the kingdom of God. They don't really have a desire for children. They love people really well, but they just have this gift of celibacy and they have a gift um, to just not uh, be married. All right. Um, I was told my spouse would come from the church. It should be more than that. Um, you can ask the Lord for more than that. Because does that mean your church or what church, right? It could it could mean anything. Um, and so I would press in from the uh, to the Lord concerning what that really looks like. All right, Facebook, any questions before I jump off? I'm looking on Periscope here. All right. Do, 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 do. Okay. Okay, good. So I want to just bless you guys in your waiting that you will not allow it to diminish you, but your waiting will actually enlarge you. You are not less than because you've had to wait. You are not um, behind because you've had to wait. You're not um, whatever the enemy tries to tell you because you've had a wait in your life. What you need to say is, God, I'm going to take this weight and give it to you, and I'm going to make it weighty. I'm going to be a dangerous man. I'm going to be a dangerous woman when I come out of this weight. And it's gonna. I'm going to understand the value of it, and I'm going to give you all the glory and all the honor because of it, um, instead of allowing it to burden you and to destroy your faith and destroy your hope. Um, someone said, how soon can I remarry after divorce? First of all, you need to figure out why you got divorced and what part you played in it. And then you need to make sure that that's healed and dealt with, um, before you even think about getting remarried. Um, all right. Is growing in intimacy with God supposed to be hard? Um, it can be hard if you're legalistic and you came out of a law field background. Uh, but growing, it's like saying is loving your your children hard is loving a friend hard is loving um your mom and dad hard now if you have had trauma and if you've had really thwarted beliefs concerning relationships then yes it's going to be hard but you want to heal from that so that you can correctly see god and correctly see other people all right I got to go uh well one more what happens when you uh okay with the weight but your husband is not willing um he is very discouraged yeah, that's the good thing about being married uh, because you get to encourage one another and it depends on what the thing is that you are waiting for as a as a couple. But there are going to be some seasons when one is stronger than the other and you have to keep uh, pushing and you have to keep um, just really reassuring your spouse. And that's just part of the, the joy of being married. Some seasons one is stronger than the other one and your job is just to keep really helping each other um, out. It can do a lot of damage so I would encourage you to get marital counseling if the weight or whatever you're believing God for is impacting your marriage all right um, is it wrong to keep asking God for confirmation can you be waiting for multiple things at the same time yes you can be waiting for multiple things at the same time but you also need to be aware of what the Lord has already done and we talked about that because sometimes we're always waiting and we miss what the Lord has done and so you need to be able to identify what he has already done and you need to be able to celebrate that um, so that you're not always in a constant of waiting a state of waiting because if you're always waiting then you 
you are, um, you can become very discontent, um, and which makes your relationship with the Lord very hard. Someone said, is it wrong to keep asking for confirmation? Probably, because that means that you have not believed the word of the Lord. Um, or the only time you need confirmation is because you don't believe something. Um, and so it, you would want to ask yourself, why don't you believe it? Um, and the Lord will be gracious, but there will be seasons where he doesn't send any confirmation and he will, um, he will be able to just, you just have to trust him uh, with that in that season. Is, is, is it a lack of faith when you desire to hear your prophetic word again? I would ask you, you can ask the Lord to confirm like the other lady asked, but you can also just press in the Lord yourself and see if the Lord can confirm it. Um, all right. Bless you guys. London. We will be there in two weeks. And so um, I think we have like 10 or 8 spots left. Um, so we want to encourage everyone that is in London. If you're in France, jump on a train. If you're in German or Belgium, you, Germany, you can come. Just get on the train and uh, see us in London. You can register on our website, AskDrFaith.com. Uh, we'll be there December 20th. It's a Thursday night. You will get a free book marked. Um, and I will be teaching on what it means to be marked, identity. We're going to minister to everybody there because it's a small gathering and so we will pray and prophesy um, over everybody there so would love to see everyone that is in London um, out January 4th and 5th I'll be in Maryland you can get that information on our website very soon I don't know if it's up there yet um, and then January 26th I'll be in Honolulu I'll be doing a training um, that whole uh, Saturday so we'll put up that information on our website as well February 2nd we have a creative arts uh, one day conference here with a worship night with some amazing speakers at uh, Legacy Center Church, so you'll be able to register for that. If you're in media, arts and entertainment, worship, any of that stuff, we would love to invite you to our Creative Arts Conference and um, Worship Night. So that's February 2nd, and registration will be opening for that soon. All right. Bless you. Talk to you soon. Share this video with others. Bye-bye.